Okay, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. Yahweh Shai being the head of the elect. That's 12,000 from each tribe. 12 times 12 is 144. They're also known as uh, the Church of the Firstborn. Okay? Begins with the 144,000. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That's his true name. Bahasham, which means in the name, in the ancient Hebrew, Lashuan Kodash. Uh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son. Bahasham, Raka Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit. All right, so we're going to get into this. Um, I have a video here from Elder Apostle Tahar entitled Elders in, uh, well, that's his channel, Elders in Transit. The video is entitled, This is Why We at GMS, which which is uh, stands for Great Millstone, don't have unity camps. So here's another reason why we do not engage in unity camps. Okay, uh, you can't have all these groups coming together and everyone has a different doctrine. That is not the definition of unity. The definition of unity is where everybody speaks the same thing. As a matter of fact, that's in scripture. Speak the same thing. Let's get that. Let's open up with that. And I'm going to react to Elder Pastor's video. I'm going to play it, stop it, make my comments, move on. That's going to be the video. You know, these uh, reprobates, man, like like this guy here, uh, Chief Priest Al-Azhar, they, they make our job very easy. Beginning with Elder Pastor on down, they make our job very easy. Speak the same thing. And, um, you know, we knew from day one that guy wasn't right, you know. The one thing, when you've been in this knowledge as long as we've been, the one benefit of being in this knowledge for a long time is you, you pick up a lot of experience. I mean, these guys think that they're prolific, you know. These guys like Al-Azhar and, and uh, you know, the, the latest crew, reprobate crew, the Boston reprobates, those guys. You know, guys like that, the, the, the two Mississippi mis misfits, they think that they're prolific. They think that guys like us, beginning to fell the past time down, haven't seen them before. In other dudes that were reprobates. Nah, man. Got news for you. You guys are not prolific. We've seen you before. And we know where you're going. We know we know ultimately what your destination is. Okay? Just want you to know that. Alright? Uh, this is the book of 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Uh, these are the words of the Apostle Paul. Keep that in mind. Who was speaking to the Israelites in Corinth. He said... Now I beseech you, beseech means to beg. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. What's his name? Very important. His name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus Christ. You cannot prove it. His name is Jesus Christ, even though it says it in the scripture. You have to go into the, the original text, the original tongue. You have to start with the Hebrew, then work your way down to the Greek, then work your way down to the Latin, before you, even, before you ever get to the King's English or the English. Okay, just so you know that. Anyway, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that's his true name, that ye all speak the same thing. So you can't have a unity camp where you have these groups coming together, say for a cookout. Most of your unity camps, they come together to have some, some, some outdoor activity, some cookout, cookouts. You know, when the weather gets nice and warm, they'll have a cookout. Right, but you got these different groups that come together, but everybody got a different doctrine. That is not the definition of unity. Okay? <laughs> and this scripture cuts them, okay? It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai, that you that you all speak the same thing. See? And that there be no divisions among you. So for there to be no divisions, you would have to speak every group would have to speak the same thing okay and that is true unity uh but that ye be perfectly joined together in same mind wait a minute for you to speak the same thing that's an example of being perfectly joined in the same mind 
Like case in point, let's let's use the ultimate example. Yahweh Shai and Yahweh, right? Well, I should have said Yahweh first. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Are they in the same mind? They're separate entities. But are they in the same mind? Absolutely. Yahweh Shai is in the same mind with his father. And Yahweh Shai said that plenty of times. <clears throat> so there's no division there. So that's our greatest example. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right? So reading on, it says, But that ye be perfectly joined together in same mind and in the same judgment. Let's read that in the NLT. Uh, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Yahweh Shai, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, un united in thought and purpose. There you go. United in thought means everybody's teaching the same doctrine. So how can you have a unity camp when you got these different groups of different doctrines? There you go. All right, so we made that point. Let's get back to the video. So like I said, I'm going to react to this video. I'm going to play it, stop it, react to it, then move on. Shalom, I'm giving all praise to you. How about Shemel? Shai, about Shem Lukak, with that Shalom, to the 144,000 and the rest of you elect out there, Shalom. So to set up the stage, this uh, Elder Pastor is re reacting to a video put up by... Uh, a character who goes by the name of his YouTube handle is the false prophet and he's reacting to a video that was uh, put up when uh, I believe uh, Sakari went live you know with uh, Alazar and I believe the same guy who put this video up he called onto the uh, onto Sakari's live feed and he was questioning um, uh, he was questioning chief priest Alazar okay and um, I have to say, Chief Priest Alazar spiritually fell flat on his face. Okay? And this is an example to us, which we already knew that, you know, <laughs> one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit is not working with Chief Priest Alazar is because he got his head covered. You know? He got his head covered, man. So that's just one reason. Anyway, uh, as you see the, the video there, the title of the video, Sakari leader, guerrilla Hebrew, ripped apart in debate. Did did uh, they have Christ there? Did, did uh, his name is Yahweh Shai, but I'll read it verbatim. Did Christ die for Romans? Okay. So without further ado, let's do this. Anyway, I'm going to title this video. This is why we here at GMS do not have uh, unity camps, okay? You know, recently we did, well, actually this morning and last night, I did a couple of videos on uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, the IUIC, concerning a couple of topics. Yeah, well, like Elder Pastor said, which that's in speaking, it's no more Bishop Nathaniel, it's uh, King Nathaniel. Because he's the undisputed leader over there at the, at the IUIC. Like uh, Elder Pastor said, there is no leadership over there. It's, it's what, it's, it's, uh, the edict is what, is what uh, King Nathaniel says. Okay? And nobody dares to come up against him. So he's the ultimate king over there. And everybody else, including the so-called leadership, is, they're nothing but subjects. He's the king. And everybody else, beginning with his cabinet, are nothing but subjects. All right, so let's move on. MOTB, which he says it's sin. It's not a chip. Let's see him. And also, he, he went into hell, and hell is an actual place that your spirit burns in forever. He says that the lake of fire is uh, an actual realm. That is the Lord, our Lord, has a key to open it, open it up, and throw you in there forever. But he said something very different on an interview he had in South Africa with his sister. If I can find it, I was looking for it. I can't find it. I don't know if it's taken down, but it was on her page. So I got to find it, and I'll find. It. I'll bring it. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it to your attention. But he says. I believe that's about 49 minutes, either, either 49 minutes in or 149, one hour and 49 minutes in. But I'm pretty sure it was uh, like 49, 45 minutes in. 
the elect. Let me stop it right there. You know, uh, King Nathaniel, he's known for changing his uh, doctrine. I mean, he changes like the moon, like the phases of the moon. And there's a scripture where it says, meddle not with him that is given to change. And over the years, those of you that have been following our videos closely every now and then, we get on this guy, King Nathaniel. He's no longer bishop. He's, he's king. Like hey, Elder Pastor said it, and he's just, I, I concur. You know, everybody else over there at the IUIC, they're nothing but subjects. The undisputed leader is Bishop Nathaniel, so he's the king. So over the years, he has totally demonstrated that he keeps, that not only does he go off, he's always changing his doctrine, okay? So let's move on. Fire came up and he said, oh, that's talking about, uh, uh, the lake of fire is talking about America, which is Babylon on fire, shop being hit by missiles. He didn't say it's also talking about the lake of fire, but this was maybe five months ago. He had went to South Africa. Yeah, so now if you've been following him and we watched the video, the, his latest live show, uh, the IUIC Live after camp Saturday on our way to handle business, we tuned in. You know, Elder Pastor always have us tune in to hear what those guys are going to say. And he has a whole new breakdown for the lake of fire. Okay. And the other scripture where it mentions where Yahushua said, I have the keys of hell and death. He has a whole new breakdown, something that was not taught at 1 West 125th Street. He has a whole new breakdown for, for, for that scripture, which is totally off. Once again, he has changed the doctrine. Anyway, let's move on. But anyway, I stumbled upon this video right here. Okay, uh, so now we're about to get into it. Takari leader, uh, Gorilla Hebrew, which you can see right there, al -Azhar, ripped apart in debate. Did Christ die for Romans? By the way, Gorilla Hebrew, that's a cult of personality. We weren't brought into this knowledge, into this truth, to create cults of personality. Okay? Let me bring out a scripture for you. Yahweh Shai didn't create a cult of personality. Okay? Yahweh Shai came in sincerity and honesty. What you saw is what you got. This is Philippians 2 and 7. It says, But made him, is talking about Yahweh Shai. Well, let's start the fifth verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shai, who being in the form of Yahweh, right? Well, now, was Yahweh Shai actually Yahweh? No, was, there were two separate entities, but one in the same mind. Okay, like father. Or like son, like father. Or like father, like son. Okay? Who being in the form of Yahweh, meaning they had the same mind, thought it not robbery to be equal with the heavenly father. And he was the, Yahweh Shai was and is the first spirit created by the heavenly father, Yahweh. That's why he has the, the honorary title of the only begotten son of the heavenly father. The honorary title. The very first spirit created. Uh, one of the titles of the Heavenly Father is the Father of Spirits. So if he's the Father of Spirits, there had to be a first spirit created. Guess who that is? Yahweh Shai. You got it. So, the seventh verse. But made himself of no reputation. Made himself of no reputation. Now, you have guys coming into this thing of ours and seek to create a rep for themselves. Create some cult of personality. As if that's what this truth is not is about. That's not what it's about. You know, as in Gorilla Hebrew. Come on, what is that? What, what the hell is that? Gorilla Hebrew. <laughs> that's a cult of personality. Okay? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, concerning us, we, we, have, we don't create cults, cults of personality. Number one, we didn't give ourselves the, uh, well, well. let me say it this way. Uh, when, when brothers would say double honors to the apostles, okay, the word apostle, that's not a cult of personality. The word apostle just means sent away. That's all it means. It's from the Greek, apostolos, which means sent away. We have been sent away. We've been given this knowledge, this truth, 
and been sent away by the Holy Spirit to go out and teach it. So indeed we are apostles and we're elders. Okay, an elder is just that. An elder is one who's been in the faith for a long time. He becomes an elder. So apostles and elders is not a cult of personality. Okay, and when I say a cult of personality, I mean some phony image. Okay, like you see in the world. You got these actors and you got these, these musicians. They create cults of personality. Personality that the populace can worship. <clears throat> and they become admired, okay? The only one we should be admiring is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai didn't create no cult of personality. Again, what you saw is what you got, okay? And here we're reading about Yahweh Shai. By the way, the Apostle Paul wrote this, and he wrote it to the Israelites uh, living in Philippi, hence the term Philippians. It says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Yeah, he was very humble. And was made in the in the likeness of men. Okay. So let's get back to the video. Ripped apart in debate that Christ died for Romans. Now, what do you mean? Somebody asked you that. You said, "What do you mean, uh, Romans?" Because the Apostle Paul was a Roman. So what do you what do you mean by Romans? I'm talking about white people. Nope, you didn't come for them. If they were Edomites. Right. You had Israel. Yeah, like Elder Potsdam always says, you got to qualify it because you're going to have Israelites that look like so-called white people. This is not a black and white thing. Even though you have these simple-minded morons that try to make it that, you know, our, our detractors, our enemies, they try to make it this Hebrew Israelite thing as a white, as a, as a so-called white and black thing. You even got Israelite groups that do not have the oil that the Holy Spirit is not working with. They try to make it as it's a so-called black and white thing. Well, it's not, because you're going to have Israelites scattered among all nations, looking like the nations where they were scattered. We teach this, okay? So it's not a so-called white and black thing. You're going to have Israelites looking straight up like so-called white people, but they have the Holy Spirit working with them to be able to discern these scriptures. Now, going back to the history, were there Israelites in Rome? Absolutely. There were Israelites in Rome, okay? And like you heard Elder Pastor said, um, the Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. You can find that in, what is that, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. But he also took Roman citizenship. There's a scripture where the Apostle Paul clearly said that he's a Roman. All right, when they were about to beat him, he said, is it lawful for you to beat a man that is a Roman? And then the, then the individual asked the Apostle Paul, are you a Roman? Okay, so there you go. But again, People don't understand that, you wacky-tacky Christian. They don't understand that because they don't know the history. We have a saying here at Great Millstone, if you don't know the history, you cannot understand the mystery. There's a scripture where it says, the mystery of the Israelites scattered among the Gentiles. That's the mystery, that the Israelites were scattered among the Gentiles, looking like the Gentiles, acting like the Gentiles, but they were not the Gentiles, they were Israelites. When I say Gentile, I mean non-Israelite, Okay. You had Israelites scattered among the non-Israelites, okay? And that's, that's a major part of the mystery for you to understand the, uh, um, the concept of the Gentiles, okay? You have to understand that. Israelites that had Roman citizenship. Well, where's that in the Bible? Apostle Paul was a Roman citizen, right. but he was an Israelite. He was mistaken, uh, he was mistaken for being an Egyptian mm -hmm. that... Yeah, Apostle Paul said that he was an Israelite. Again, Hebrews 11th chapter. Let's go to it. Or is it? Hold on. I'm sorry. Romans 11th chapter. If I said Hebrews, I meant to say Romans. Romans 11th chapter. The very first verse. I say then, these are the words of the Apostle Paul, speaking to the Israelites in Rome. I say then, have the Heavenly Father cast away his people. Who are his people? Well, let's keep reading. God forbid, meaning no. God forbid means no. For I also am an Israelite. So what nationality was the Apostle Paul? An Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. But then, then he comes back, though, and says that he was a Roman. Okay? Let me show you that. 
Now, can you imagine asking the wacky tacky Christian to explain that to you? They wouldn't be able to explain it, especially if they don't know the history. Okay, uh, this is the book of Acts 22 and 25. And as they bound him with thongs, uh, Paul said, now, subject matter, Apostle Paul, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? Who is he talking about? Himself. But wait a minute, I just read to you that he said he was a, uh, an, an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. How can he be an Israelite and a Roman at the same time? Well, this is why, this is why you have to understand history. You had Israelites that took on citizenship, different citizenships. Romans was a citizenship. Okay? And even the so-called Romans, they were really Edomites. Okay? They were Edomites that took on that, that uh, the name Romans, which really came from uh, the seed of Japheth. You had two, uh, two members of the seed of Japheth. Uh, Romulus and Remus, okay? You know, there's that legend that they were suckled by wolves. You know, they were ju they were of the seed of Jathith, okay? So what happened was um, when the Edomites took over the, uh, the seed of Jathith, took over their land, right? They kicked them out of that land and, you know, took on their, their, their um, identity, started calling themselves uh, Greeks and then Romans, okay? And that's an, for another video, another time, all right? So that's how that term Roman or Romans came about. You have to know the origin. And again, in Psalm 49, 11, it says, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. They call their lands after their own names. That's what the Edomites do. They go and they conquer a nation and they take on their identity, they take on their culture and their identity. The Edomites are the ultimate culture vultures, beginning with the so-called Jews, the tribe of Amalek. Okay? So Acts 22 and 25, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge or whip a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed. What thou doest for this man is a Roman. Well, wait a minute. Again, how, how can he be a Roman and a Hebrew Israelite at the same time? I already explained it to you. Many of the Israelites took on Roman citizenship. That's the explanation. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? Listen to Apostle Paul's reply. He said, Yeah. You see? <laughs> Even when you read it in the NLT, it gives you more, it's a lot more clearer. Acts 22 and 27. So the commander went over and asked Paul, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Uh, listen to Paul's reply. Yes, I certainly am, Paul replied. There you go. But in the book of, let's bring it back, in the book of Romans 11, this is what the Apostle Paul said. Romans 11 at the NLT, the first verse. I, I ask then, have the Most High rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? See, <laughs> look at that. The NLT makes it explicit. Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. You see that? There you go. Let's get back to the video. You got to know that history. Thank you for being an Egyptian that uh, set up a group of uh, murderers to uh, take down uh, the Roman Empire. So, you know, he, as a matter of fact, he uses status as a Roman citizen to have the Roman authorities be on his side. Matter of fact, the way he was executed was a, a more humane way than being crucified. And they hung the apostle peter he wanted he requested to be hung out upside down and uh the apostle paul's head was chopped off because they said well we can't hang we can't crucify you that way that's only for niggas but you are a nigger <laughs> you, you know what i mean by that but because you have roman citizen status we have to honor your execution by chopping your head off 
So Apostle Paul was an Israelite with Roman citizen because status. Because it was a quick death. Your head got oh, chopped off. What the hell happened? I know I paused it. The Apostle Paul... The Apostle Paul was an Israelite with Roman status. Okay? That's the explanation for that. And you gave up the spirit. The cross, you're, it's an agonizing, slow death. But anyway, um, this is the main reason why we don't deal with unity camps. And anytime a, a, a camp rolls up, different camp, you know, hey, we'll say shalom. You know, if they were former one Western. But um I'll immediately go into what they go in, what they deal with, you know, their topics and I'll question them. I'll have a like a impromptu impromptu debate on it, right? But anyway, we were talking about this Saturday about the Sakari not accepting certain books or letters or epistles of the apostle Paul. Yeah, it's been um that's been going on for a while. They got a problem with the letters of the Apostle Paul, mainly because they don't understand his letters. And, you know, the Apostle Peter spoke about that. So, you know, that prophecy got to be fulfilled. And the Sakari is a great example of that, what the Apostle Peter said. Let's read it, Second Peter. So we don't marvel that um, they have this attitude. I'm talking about the Sakari, that they have this attitude towards the writings of the Apostle Paul, mainly because they can't understand them, which shows you that they're not deep, which shows you their level of understanding in these scriptures. It's very, it's very small, very minuscule. Look that word up. Second Peter three and uh, eleven. Hold up, do I have the right scripture? Uh, see yeah second peter 3 and i'll start at 14 wherefore beloved when the apostle paul when really this is peter when the apostle peter says beloved he's talking about the elect he's not talking about every israelite only the elect wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot what do you think it means without spot Meaning you have to have the 100% doctrine, all right? You have to have the 100% understanding of the doctrine. You have to speak 100% truth. That's what it means without spot. There can there cannot be any spots in, in your doctrine. And if, if there's a lie in your doctrine, that's a spot. That's a spot, okay? So it says without spot. Yahweh wants a clean bride, clean and white which represents purity, without spot, and blameless. There you go. <clears throat> An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. So wait a minute. The Apostle Peter called Apostle Paul a beloved brother. So you're about to hear Chief Priest Alazar said or say that he he does not believe in the writings of the Apostle Paul. He straight up said it. he don't believe in the writings of the Apostle Paul. So maybe you should question the writings of Apostle Peter because Apostle Peter endorsed, as we read in here, the Apostle Peter endorsed the Apostle Paul, fully endorsed him. So <clears throat> that being said, uh, that means um, Alizar, chief priest, Alizar, that means you can't use any of the writings of the Apostle Paul based upon the statement you made. And you can't, you really shouldn't use any of the writings of, of Peter. So, first Peter would be out for you. Okay, second Peter. And all the writings of the Apostle Paul, all the, uh, the different churches where he went to, which precipitated writings to be written to those churches, like Ephesus and Thessalonica, and uh, Colossus, okay? Oh, what a, oh, what a, um, how's that go? Oh, what a, a deceptive web we weave when at first we practice to deceive, okay? Anyway, Second Peter 3 and 15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul who according to the wisdom, 
given unto him have written unto you. So here's Apostle Peter endorsing Apostle Paul. Okay? As also in all his epistles, which the word epistle means, is from the Greek, means letters sent away. These were letters that were sent away to those churches and eventually they became books of which we have today. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things which in which are some things hard to be understood, like case in point, the, the group Sakari, beginning with uh, uh, Chief Priest al -Azhar. Certain writings of the Apostle Paul, it's hard for him to understand, which is why he doesn't want to accept it. Now he makes the statement that he doesn't, ex that he doesn't accept any of the writings of the Apostle Paul. You about to hit. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which some things are hard to be understood, or hard to be understood. Not to us. Begin with Elder Apostle down down. It's easy peasy for us to understand the writings of the Apostle Paul. They come to life in our heads, but to certain guys who are not right, who are not part of the elect, they have a problem accepting it. They have a problem understanding the writings of the Apostle Paul. Okay? And we're reading why right here. Here's the answer. As also in all his epistles, all of them, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, they that are unlearned, so that's a sign when a guy makes a statement like, uh, I, don't, I don't accept the writings of the Apostle Paul, that's a sign that he's unlearned. And anyone following him, anyone underneath him, uh, they're unlearned as well. Because if, they're, if they become learned, they'd get away from him. They'd get away from Chief Priest al -Azhar. And his buddy has the same attitude, Deacon Akar. Okay? So that's a sign that they're unlearned. <laughs> which means the Holy Spirit is not working with them. That's one of the reasons why they're wearing that hat on their head. The fact that they wear a hat on their head is a sign that they're unlearned. Because the same Apostle Paul said, a man is an image and glory of the Heavenly Father, and he ought not to cover his head. That's what the Apostle Paul said. And it makes total sense. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, right? Which is short for wrestle, fight against. They wrestle against the writings of the Apostle Paul, which the Apostle Paul got his doctrine from Yahweh Shai. The Apostle Paul, that wasn't his own doctrine. Okay, he didn't stay in his basement somewhere and wrote those words, and it became the, the doctrine of the Apostle Paul. No, the Apostle Paul's doctrine was the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. That's why the Apostle Paul made a statement. He said, I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. And the Apostle Paul, he was constantly trying to better himself in the, in the gospel. He was constantly trying to be on one, one on one with Yahweh Shai. Okay, that was his main goal. He was trying, he said he wished he could take on the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. Okay, all he, all he thought about was Yahweh Shai, the Apostle Paul. Okay, he wanted to be as close to Yahweh Shai as humanly possible within the spirit, okay? He even talked about he, if, if he were to die, he would be with Yahweh Shai. But then he said, it's, it's, it's much better for me to be alive so I can teach you. He was speaking to his congregation, okay? So no, he didn't teach any doctrine that Yahweh Shai didn't endorse or didn't teach, okay? The Apostle Paul was not rebellious. They, Sakari, beginning with Chief Priest al -Azhar, they just don't understand his writings, like the Apostle Peter is saying right here. Let me read it one more time for you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, which they that are unlearned and unstable, and from the jump, from the jump, al -Azhar, Chief Priest al -Azhar has been unstable. He was in GMS, okay, he couldn't cut, he couldn't make the grade, he was a problem child. And eventually he left and formed his own thing. And here we have what we have today with him. He's been unstable from day one. Okay. So which day that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, fight against, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So that's what's left for guys like that. Destruction. 
And again, what scripture comes to mind, brothers, sisters? 1 Peter 4 and 17, judgment. Judgment is going to begin with where? Those that know that they're Israelites. Men as well as women. Okay? Judgment. So never forget that. Let's get back to the video. Certain books or letters or epistles of the Apostle Paul. But uh, you're going to hear, hear, hear it from uh, Alizar, priest, high priest, whatever his chief high priest, whatever his title is. You're going to hear it, and that confirms it, you know? Yep. That, um, yep, that confirms it. What you're about to hear, that confirms it, what we've been saying. So you know we're not lying on uh, Chief Priest Al-Azhar. You know, uh, how's that scripture go? Let your, let thine own mouth condemn thee. Okay? He doesn't believe in any of the uh, writings, epistles. Of the, whatever the apostle Paul said is not gospel. Right. In other words. So I'm just going to let, so we were talking. That's what he believes. Talking about it, but we said there's certain things that they didn't agree with. So pretty much they don't agree. They might say accept Paul's writing, but they don't accept it as um, authoritative. He uses that word. So here's the uh, proof on it. Yeah, they they don't accept they don't accept the Apostle Paul's writings, which at this point, if they use any of the quotations of the Apostle Paul, that would make them a hypocrite. If they go into any debate and they happen to pull out a scripture. Right? They happened to pull out a scripture which was clearly written by Apostle Paul or the men that wrote for Apostle Paul. That would make them a hypocrite. And for that matter, if they would use any scripture of Peter, such as 1 Peter, 2 Peter, that also would make them a hypocrite because Apostle Peter endorsed, as I just read to you, Apostle Peter endorsed Apostle Paul. 2 Peter 3 and 16, beginning there. So they're in a conundrum, all right? This guy, Chief Priest al and and the, the rest of the guys that follow him over there at Sakari, they are in a conundrum. And as it stands right now, they're, they're a persona non grata. That group is a persona non grata. They're not a, uh, they're not a, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not a res re respectable, 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 respectable group in Israel, they do not represent uh, the Israelites, right? The respectable, <laughs> I have a problem saying this word, the respectable, the respectable group of Israelites, they do not represent the respectable group of Israelites, okay? They are disrespectable, okay? Persona non grata. Let's move on. And like I said, man, this is why we will not have a unity camp, because we don't know what another camp is going to say, whether it be ISUPK, IUIC, Sakari. ISUPK, they teach that John the Baptist fell out the truth. So they're also a, not, a persona non grata. They're not respectable. Okay. Yahweh said, a little leaven leaven of the whole lump. Our doctrine is supposed to be pure, without error. Okay, 100% truth. Yahweh will, Yahweh will, will accept nothing less. DC, whatever. And we, and we are set up to defend the gospel, so if somebody's teaching something contrary to what we're teaching... We got to tell them, well, look, brother, you're going off. And it might turn it. Reprove and rebuke. Remember, brothers, sisters, there's no lie of the truth. Let's get that scripture. No lie, not one. So you got a group that got lies in their doctrine. That ain't the truth. You cannot, you cannot say that you're teaching the truth. And there's a scripture where it is written, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Right? This is 1 John 2, and you got to have 100, for it to be truth, it's got to be 100%, not, not, not even 99.9%. 1 .9 John 2 and 21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So you can't have one little lie in your doctrine. If you do, then the whole thing has to be thrown out. 
It's like that it goes back to the analogy of cancer. If the body has one uh, has a cancer cell in, in it and it's and it's growing rogue, that cancer cell has to be dealt with or eventually the whole body will become corrupt. Okay? So uh like the scriptures say, and the, and that no lie is of the truth. Now the heavenly Father, he, he's looking for the truth. Okay, O oh Lord, are not thine eyes, thine eyes upon the truth? Let's get that. And then from there, one just came to mind in Hosea. This is the book of Jeremiah five and three. Let's read it. It says, O oh Lord. Are not thine eyes upon the truth? So, so the heavenly Father is, is looking for what? He's looking for the truth. Those that have the truth, and for you to have the truth, you got to speak a hundred percent truth. Let's go from there to Hosea four. This is why the heavenly Father got a controversy with these uh, wicked ass Israelites out here. Let's read why. Hosea 4 and 1, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, sons of Israel in the Hebrew. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth. So you, you got to have 100% truth for it to become, for it to be called truth. Okay? And we had great millstone GMS. We got 100% truth. And we proudly and boldly say that, man. Because there is no truth. The other groups can't say that. Because we'll check them on it. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the Heavenly Father in the land. So it begins with the truth. Okay, let's get back to the video. Well, look, brother, you're going off. And it might turn into a debate. Yeah, so let's let's hear that one more time. I told you I'm going to be stopping and reacting to this video. Let's hear what the Apostle Tal said one more time. And we, and we are set up to defend the gospel. So if somebody's yes, teaching something contrary to what we're teaching... We got to tell him, well, look, brother, you're going off. And it we got to tell him, look, brother, you're going off. Yeah. And you got Israelites that don't like that. They say we're, we're troublemakers. We're causing trouble because they don't understand the scriptures. And they're, 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 uh, they're in their feelings. You know, a lot of Israelites are more in their feelings than they are in the knowledge. Okay. And the men are, wor they, the men are worse than the women. Hell, they're more emotional than the women. It is right here, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, which says this, preach the word, this is our job, right? Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, right? It doesn't matter, you know, if the weather's cold or hot, you got to be out there to do the work. That's what it means, in season, in season out of season. Now, here it, here's, here it comes, reprove, rebuke, okay? Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why are we supposed to reprove and rebuke? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's what we see with all these different Israelite groups. They're not able to endure sound doctrine. That's why eventually, along the way, their doctrine starts to slip. The IUIC, Sakari, the ISUPK, GOCC. Okay, they, they are not enduring sound doctrine. Some of the, the, the word doctrine means a body of principles. Some of their principles that they teach is not sound. When, when Chief Priest Al-Azhar makes that statement, he doesn't accept or have respect to any of the writings of Apostle Paul. That, that, that's not sound. That's not sound doctrine. <laughs> when uh, Bishop Nathaniel, or should I say King Nathaniel, when he makes the statement about uh, hell, his his latest breakdown of hell, right? It's not sound doctrine. It's unsound. Okay? But we're in that time, man. This is how you know we're in the latter days. Why? Because the scripture says this. And by the way, this was more than 2,000 years ago. This was the Apostle Paul warning Timothy back then about guys that would not endure sound doctrine. That happened more than 2,000 years ago. And that's happening right now. As it is written, there's no new thing under the sun. See, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Right, speaking things that sound smooth. You know, basically speaking things to justify 
people to sin upon their lusts, okay? Their teachers will speak things to allow them to sin, to allow them to go off in the, in the ministry. All right, so let's get back to the video. Well, look, brother, you're going off. And it might turn into a debate. It could be turned into a friendly debate. But anyway, I'm going to let you hear it, then I'm going to close. That link was yeah, and, and like Apostle Charles said, it might turn into a friendly debate. But in re in reality, if we reprove and rebuke and, and they... Um, they don't want to hear it, then we are to reject them. Really, really, there's no room for debate. Okay, after the third admonition, let me let me get that. See, we we like Apostle. He's the same one who said we don't do debates. The word of the Lord is not up for debate. Not at all. Okay, and it was Elder Apostle who said that we don't do debates. The word of the Lord is not up for debate. The the Heavenly Father told. Is the prophet Ezekiel to tell them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Hear means they listen. Forbear means they don't want to hear the word of the Lord. And they're going to be more Israelites that forbear than those that hear. Which sets the stage for what? Brutal judgment. Massive judgment. Titus 3 and 10, it says, A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay, so that person is persona non grata, that person is rejected. Okay, let's get back to the video. That link was furnished for a sister by the name of Yasha, right? But let's, let's, let's just entertain, let's entertain this briefly. Let's, let's see, let's see what this takes us. So what's good? <laughs> yeah, what's going on, sir? So you teach that only Israelites can have salvation, correct? I teach that conceptually what salvation is uh, about, biblically, is a nationalistic concept. Israelites beginning with the elect. All right, beginning with the elect. Only they are going to receive salvation right now. And the salvation is when Yahweh Shai come with them chariots and deliver them from the lake of fire, King Nathaniel which the lake of fire is going to take place here, right, right here in America. America is going to be on fire, 100% of it, from sea to shining sea, 5,000 square miles of nothing but fire. That's what the Apostle John saw in his vision. That's the lake of fire. And at one time you taught that, but now you're teaching this whole grotesque-looking doctrine that doesn't resemble anything of the truth. Once again, you've changed the, you've changed the, you've changed the gospel, King Nathaniel. You ain't bishop no more. You've been you've been upped. You've been gra you graduated. You're the king now, King Nathaniel. Yes. Okay. Which happened to be Israelites? All right. And and you saying that Christ only died for Israelites too? Correct. I mean, that's what the book says. Okay. So you believe? That's the first lie already. I asked him, did he believe that Christ only died for Israelites? And he said, that's what the book says. But we know that. The book does not say that. Only thing you have well, to do... You yeah, the book does say that. ...is go to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave... <laughs> oh, no. John 3.16. Come on, man. That's where you're going to go? He's See, in John 3.16, the key word there is world. Now, if this guy knew the Greek, he'd know the word that's there is cosmos, which means the world of Israel. The word cosmos means a separate society. What society? What world? The world of Israel. Israel is a world in itself. Let me show you that. Isaiah 45 and 17. But again, this uh, individual that um, took it upon himself to call uh, Al-Azhar and try to debate him over the phone, he's not knowledgeable his damn self. Okay? Isaiah 45 and 17. Israel is a world in itself. So when it says... For God so loved the world. The, lo the world that God loved, which his name is Yahweh, is the world of Israel. Israel is a world in itself. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, you as in Israel, the Israelites, world without end. So Israel is a world in itself. Now that word world in, the, in the John 3.16, when you go into Greek, 
the word there is cosmos, okay? Even in certain scriptures in the New Testament where it mentions world, you have to go into the Greek and you'll see different Greek words for the word world, okay? It depends on what world you're talking about, all right? But again, they err not knowing the scriptures, neither understanding the meaning of words. But he gave his own. Come on, that's old John three sixteen. Come on now, we done blew that out out of the water years ago. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on with that. Cut it out. Yeah, hey, well, like the Lord said, his people are sottish children. Sottish means stupid. You just witnessed an example of that. John three sixteen. <laughs> really, really, dude. <laughs> begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life mm -hmm. and then you can just go to first john chapter 2 starting at verse 1 and verses 2 and it'll tell you that he did not just die that he was not just the propitiation for our sins propitiation means healing okay and he speak he speaks about sin the only nation that can sin is the nation of Israel. Why? Because the laws, what is sin? Transgression of the law, right? That's 1 John 3 and 4. Okay, that's another way you can get that guy. 1 John 3 and 4, which says this, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So now, here's the question. Who was the law given to? Was it given to all the nations? No. No. The law was only given to the Israelites. So in reality, the only ones that can sin are the Israelites because the law was only given to the Israelites. So ipso facto, which is Latin Latin for by the fact itself, the only ones that's going to be forgiven of their sins are Israelites, beginning with the elect, because they're the only ones that can sin. Why? Because they're the only ones the law was given to. The law was not given to the other nations. Okay. Let's get that. Psalm 78. As a matter of fact, when you go in the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, it tells you why the Heavenly Father gave us the law. To elevate us over the other nations. Let's read that first. Okay? Uh, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. The law was given to us to elevate us over the nations. And we're going to read it. Look at the subheading. Israel urged to obey God's law. Israel. What does that say? Israel. It didn't say all the nations. It said Israel, as in the Israelites. Now, when you jump down to the fifth verse, this is the Heavenly Father speaking through uh, uh, Moses, his spokesman, and he's speaking to the Israelites. Matter of fact, the very book, Deuteronomy, was given to the Israelites. Let's get Deuteronomy 1 and 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. So these words were given to who? All the other nations? No, it was given to the Israelites. So now let's deal with the law, subject matter of the law. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, the fifth verse. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it, speaking to the Israelites. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. That's all the other nations, non-Israelites. The law, statutes, and commandments is our wisdom in the sight of all the other nations that are not Israelites. They were given to us to elevate us over the other nations, us Israelites. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Why? Because we have the law, statutes, and commandments. For what nation is there so great who have the Heavenly Father so nigh unto them? Now, if you knew the meaning of the, the word lawyer, which is the Hebrew word for Levi, the Hebrew word for Levi, which is one of the tribes, Moses came out of the tribe of Levi, the Hebrew word for Levi is lawyer, which literally means joined to me. Now, how is the nation of Israel joined to the Heavenly Father? Through the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's the covenant. The word covenant means agreement. Only The Heavenly Father only gave that agreement, that covenant to the nation of Israel, the Israelites. So ipso facto, the only ones that can sin are the Israelites. The only ones that have sinned and are paying for their sins by getting those curses, Deuteronomy 28, is the Israelites. 
because we sinned against the Heavenly Father. We broke the covenant. The covenant was not made with, with the other nations. It was only made with the nation of Israel. Okay? For what nation is there so great who have the Heavenly Father so nigh unto them through these laws, statutes, and commandments? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation? It didn't say nations. It says what nation? Singular, as in the nation of Israel. And what nation is there so great that have statues and judgments? It didn't say nations. It said nation. What nation? What's the answer to that? The nation of Israel. And what nation is there so great that have statues and judgments so righteous as all this law which I sent before you this day? So it's official. The law was only given to the nation of Israel, the Israelites. Now, let's go to Psalm 78 to back that up. Now we can read Psalm 78. It will make sense now to you. Psalm 78 and 5. It is right here. For he established a testimony in Jacob that he is the heavenly father. His name is Yahweh. And appointed a law. And appointed a law in Israel. Not all the other nations. Okay. okay? Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known on, that they should make them known to their children. So what happens when you break that law? Well, let's get 1 John 3 and 4. I think I might have read it, but let's read it again. So the only nation that could sin is the nation of Israel. Okay? Why don't the wacky tacky Christian get that? 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth the law, or also the law. The law who was given to who? The Israelites. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the only nation that can sin is the nation of Israel, the Israelites. Okay? Because we were the only ones the law was given to. Ipso facto, uh, Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he came for the sins of the Israelites. He came them to he came to absolve them from their sins, beginning with the sins of the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? For our sins, referring to the Jews, but for the sins of the whole world the whole world of israel not all the other nations the law was only given to the whole world of israel israel is a world in itself isaiah 45 and 17 as well the whole world is talking about israelites there you because go. the other nations did not have the law That's so how can they you know sin if they don't know the law the law has got to be given to you first now let's hold that now again when will the other nations get the law? Let's go to prophecy now. Isaiah, the second chapter. This is when they're going to get the law. When they're serving us in captivity in the kingdom. That's when they're going to get the law. Let's read it. Isaiah 2. Now, by the way, this prophecy here in Isaiah 2 hasn't been fulfilled yet. It was, this was written around 700 something BC by the prophet Isaiah. Yet it hasn't been fulfilled yet. How powerful is that? Isaiah 2 and... Uh, uh, let's read the, well, let's start the first verse. We're going to read it quick. Uh, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days, oh, the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. What is that? That's a metaphor for the nation of Israel. That's the mountain of the Lord's house, the Israelites, all 12 tribes, right? And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. The hills is a metaphor for the other nations. So us Israelites, we're going to be exalted over the other nations, right? We're going to be set up by Yahweh Shai. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. He's coming to set up his people, the Israelites, beginning with the elect. Now let's read. It says, and many people shall go and say, come you, many people as in the other nations, the other nations. Remember the ones that were not given these laws. Remember? Let's read. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Right. His ways meaning what? The laws, statutes, and commandments. Now the other nations are going to come to us to learn the laws, statutes, and commandments. And they're going to do that in slavery underneath us. All right. They're going to be taught our laws, statutes, and commandments in slavery as they're serving us in captivity because every every last one of those nations are going into captivity under us jeremiah 30 and 16 you can read that okay 
and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, which represent the Israelites, shall go forth the law, see? And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, see? There you go. You can't get around it. <laughs> so that's when the other nations are going to receive the law, statutes, and commandments. Right now, they don't have them. Okay, so it's impossible for them to sin. Yet they're still going into captivity underneath us Israelites. That's their destiny. Talking about all the other nations, beginning with the nation of Edom. Sin if they don't know the law. The law has got to be given to you first. Oh, but let's just continue. Everything that the book says, right? I don't understand your question. You believe the whole volume of the book, right? Oh, uh, well, contextually, uh, in the book right. of Psalms 40 and 7, where the term volume of the book was referring to, was the Torah. So, certainly, I believe in the Torah. Okay. Cool. Which, again, the word Torah is from the Hebrew, Tharawa, Tharara, which means the law. Now, the whole Bible is really the law. Okay? The whole Bible is the law. Okay? But, let's move on. He said just the Torah. In other words, so wait a minute, let's get this correct. The Torah, most people associate with the Torah with the five books of Moses. That's it. So you just believe in the, just the five books of Moses, Chief Priest Alazar? Is that what you're saying? You know, this reminds me of this, this same guy here, Chief Priest Alazar. He's the guy who made the statement. He finds his mind, and he wasn't lying when he said that. He, he said he finds his mind in a, in, a, in a state of constant delirium. All right, maybe he's in, 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 well, not maybe, he's in the state of delirium right now. That's what he said. I didn't say it, he said it. Let's look at the definition of delirium. You got to listen to these guys when, when they speak, because they're revealing themselves. Delirium definition. Okay, there you go. Delirium. Let's read. It says, a disturbed state of mind. <laughs> Distur so he's disturbed. A disturbed state of mind or consciousness, especially an acute trans transient condition associated with fever, intoxication, and certain other physical disorders characterized by symptoms such as confusion, disorientation, agitation, and hallucinations. Wow. Man, dude, you all messed up. You're the one that said you find your mind in a constant state of delirium. That's what you said. At one time, he had the uh, moniker Adonis Delirious. Remember that? Those of, you, those of you who go back a while with us here on YouTube, GMS Great Millstone, you will remember that when Sakari first came on the scene, the leader, one of his uh, cults of personality <laughs> was Adonis Delirious. That was one of his cults of personality. So as, as far as I'm concerned, his, his mind is in the state of delirium right now, okay? So now Which is true because, but ultimately it represented the whole book, New Testament. But when, you, how, when that statement was... Yeah, like Apostle said, it represented the whole, the whole book is the law, man. Stop it, Chief Priest Allah. You're trying to be slick. Let's get Matthew 13 and 52. Oh, what a tangle web we weave. Or he weaves at when at first he practiced to deceive. Book of Matthew 13 and 52. Then said he unto them, Yahweh is speaking here, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder. Who is that? That's the heavenly father, Yahweh. All right. Through his son, Yahweh he's the owner of the house, the householder is owner of the house, the house of Israel, which bringeth forth out of his treasure, his treasure is what? This knowledge is truth, Romans 11 and 33, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So that's the New Testament and the Old Testament, which they go hand in hand. Okay, if you knew the book, you would know this. We're talking about he just believes in the Torah. No, man, the whole book. All scripture. Let's get 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture. It didn't say some scripture. 
Okay, all scripture, 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Heavenly Father. It didn't say some scripture, it said all. That includes the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. All scripture is given, and that includes the writings of the Apostle Paul, which he, you're going to hear him say, he does not accept. All scripture, the, the writings of the Apostle Paul is part of scripture. It says all scripture is given, but given by who? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Heavenly Father. Right, the, 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 the writings that the Apostle Paul wrote, was he was inspired by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote his writings. And he was so inspired that even the Apostle Peter marveled at, at the writings of the Apostle Paul, which, which the writings of the Apostle Paul came as a direct result of the inspiration of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. So it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Heavenly Father and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, all scripture, that the man of the Heavenly Father may be perfect. And that's why Chief Alazar is not perfect. He has been found wanting, man. Okay? We're, we're supposed to strive for perfection. Yahweh I made a statement. He said, be perfect even as my father is perfect. And he's perfect. Yahweh himself is perfect. Okay? Perfection is our goal. 2 Timothy 3 and 17. It says that the man of the, of the heavenly father may be perfect. So Yahweh the, 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 Shai wants us to be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And what Chief Alazar is doing, that's not a good work. Not at all. Okay, let's move on. But when, Yahweh, when that statement was made in Psalms, it referred to the books that were already written were the writings, the prophets, the history, and the laws. All scripture is profitable for what? All scripture is given by inspiration of the Heavenly Father and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. All scripture, chief priest Alazar, all scripture, not some scriptures. I just believe in the Torah. There you go. State of delirium. Confused. Disorientated. <laughs> Let's move on, man. Now, I got a question for you. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. All right. Can you go to the book of Galatians? That's not the Torah, brother. That's not the Torah. <laughs> okay. I'm still going. It's, it's, I'm, are we going to what Paul wrote? Again, the Torah, the word Torah goes back to the Hebrew word, the rara, which means the law. Now, the writings of Galatians was based upon what? The writings that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Israelites living in Galatia was based upon what? Upon the law. This is the same Apostle Paul said, yea, we establish the law. Okay, so that takes us back to the Torah, Chief Priest Alazar. Let's read the book of Romans 3 and 31. The instructions that the Apostle Paul gave to the Israelites in Galatia, was it not based upon the law? That's all they had to teach from was from the law and the prophets, the law and the prophets. Let's get Romans 3 and 31. Showing you right here, the Apostle Paul said, we establish the law. Because the, the Apostle Paul was also charged with trying to change the, the, the traditions of the law. As Yahweh Shai also was charged with that by, the, by those wicked, unlearned Jews. Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? There you go. God forbid, meaning no. Yea, we establish the law. So all the writings that the Apostle Paul wrote, well, the men that had that was with him that wrote, all his teachings contained within those writings was based upon the law, which takes us back to the Torah. What are you talking about, Chief Priest Alizad? That's that delirium kicking in. All right, Adonis Delirious. That's that delirium. I, I do not. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. He said, he said that. I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. Well, you must be greater than Peter, Apostle Peter, because Apostle Peter re, uh, viewed the letters as being authoritative. Let's read it one more time, what the Apostle Peter said about Paul's writings. 
Okay? 2 Peter 3 and 16. One more time. One more again. 2 Peter 3, 16. And also in all his epistles. This is Peter speaking of Paul. In all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. Wait a minute. Did I... Uh, let me start the 15th verse. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, who, who, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Talking about the epistles. So here's Peter endorsing the apostle Paul based upon his writings. Okay? So. Well, you must be Alazar, you must be greater than Peter because you don't endorse Paul's writings, but Peter does. So which one should we listen to? Should we listen to Apostle Peter or should we listen to the great Adonis Delirious, aka Chief Priest Alazar? This guy slips into a cult of personality like a man slips into underwear <laughs> or slips into a pair of shoes. <laughs> As authoritative. I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. I, I well, do. well, thank goodness Apostle Peter does. Okay, because if Alazar, if he had his way, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the writings of Apostle Paul today. Because he doesn't view them as authoritative. If he, You know, he was back there talking about Alazar. But if it, it was up to him to write those writings or publish those writings, we wouldn't have them today. Because he doesn't view them as being authoritative. What he really should say is he doesn't understand them and he wrestles against them. That's really what he should say because that's what Peter said. Peter said they don't understand Paul's writings because they're not deep. They're unlearned. Let's read it. Second Peter 3 and 16, and also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. That's why Chief Priest Alazar made that statement. I do not endorse the, the writings of Apostle Paul because he doesn't understand them because he's unlearned, he's unstable well, let's keep reading and as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned such as our boy with the delirium suffers from delirium Adonis Delirious, Chief Priest Alazar, whatever cult of personality Gorilla, oh yeah, how could I forget that one Gorilla Hebrew, that's another one all right, it says, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, just like our boy Chief Priest Alazar, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So that's all that's left for Chief Priest Alazar, destruction. And you'll bear witness to it. Okay, destruction. Even now he's circling the drain. Look at him, he's circling the drain, man. Is authoritative. I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. Do not I, I do not view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. No, because you don't understand them. You do not understand the epistles of Paul. That's why you don't view them as being authoritative. Because you don't understand them. And you're gonna have that attitude until you get destroyed. Like Peter said, Apostle Peter. Apostle Peter warned us of guys like this. Okay? So don't marvel at what he said. Apostle Peter told us about guys like this. And his boy, he has the same mentality. His boy, Deacon Hakar. Okay? Hey, Hassad, are you, are you, are you awake over there? Hassad, you, you endorse this shit? You seem like the, of, of the two, of the three, meaning Alazar, Deacon Akar and yourself, Hassad, you out of the three, you seem to be the most level-headed. You seem to be. Or maybe maybe I'm being deceived. Do you endorse what uh Alazar is saying here? And if you don't, why don't why the hell don't you get away from them guys? <laughs> so, you know, we just found out, I just found out just now, that he doesn't deal with any of the books of Paul. He might quote Paul and bring us some out. Yeah, he might quote Paul, which would make him a hypocrite. Because he doesn't endorse the writings of Paul. On one hand, you don't endorse the writings of Paul, clearly because you don't understand them. But then you, whenever it benefits you, 
let's say you're in a debate because debating is your thing. Whenever it benefits you, now you're going to reach for one of the writings of Apostle Paul. When it benefits you. So that makes you a hypocrite. Okay? The scriptures speak about be not, hip, be not a hypocrite, man. I think that's in the Apocrypha. Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men. I think that's how it goes. And what is the word hypocrite? That's from the Greek word, which, mean in, which means actor. You're going to find out, you Israelites out there, you brothers as well as you sisters, you're going to find, find out you got a lot of actors in this thing of ours. They're not real. They're spurious. Look that word up. They're spurious. They're not real. Okay? And they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why. Be not a hypocrite, KJV. Ah, there we go. You can read it right from here. Ecclesiasticus 1 and 29. It says, also known as Sirach, Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. You, you, are you listening, Alazar, Chief Priest Alazar? It says, Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. There you go. Get back to the video. What happened there? That he doesn't deal with any of the books of Paul. He might quote Paul to bring us a modern Paul. So, so whenever you heard what Pastor said, he might quote Paul. So you brothers out there, right, whenever you hear Chief Priest Alizal, any member of his group quoting, the writer, quoting something from the writings of the Apostle Paul, chalk it up that they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites because they don't believe in the writings of the Apostle Paul. They only lead us said with conviction, he doesn't endorse. You heard the conviction in his voice, right? He doesn't endorse the writings of Apostle Paul. He doesn't, he doesn't endorse them. He doesn't respect them. But the, the, the real truth is that he doesn't understand them. That's the real truth. Okay. But not say that it's uh, scriptural or, or authoritative as he, use, he uses that word authoritative. Which we believe the whole... And who the hell is he to, to say what is authoritative or not? This is a, this is a Johnny come lately. This is a, 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 this is a novice, man. Lift it up with pride. Let's get that. Don't endorse the... Like, he, he speaks as if he's been in this thing of ours for 40 hardcore years. And he's a senior elder. <laughs> I tell you, man. <laughs> but that, once again, that's the Heavenly Father fattening these guys up for the kill, man. Fattening them up with these, this foolish pride. 2 Timothy 3 and, and, and 6 not a novice, all right? Least being lifted up with pride. That's why he has the, the, the title of chief priest, Alazar. Chief, no, you're not a chief priest. That's another symptom of your delusion, your delirium. Chief priest, come on, man. Chief what? <laughs> not a novice, least being lifted up. What This guy goes back to what, 2012 is when he came in? 2011, somewhere around there? That's less than what? That's less than 12 years. Less than 12 years. And, and even through that, in that 12 years, this guy was bouncing around like a pinball. Okay? Trying to find his niche or his niche, as they say. And he's finally found it in the Gorilla Hebrew uh, uh, Chief Priest Alazar cult of personality. Come on, man. We, dude, we see right through you, man. We that, <laughs> we that have the acumen. Look that word up. A-C-U-M-E-N. We that have the acumen, we see right through you, man. Second, um, First Timothy 3 and 6. Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride. That's what you have in Chief Priest Alazar. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. There you go. That's exactly where he's at. He's in, he's in the condemnation of the devil. The devil got that boy. Okay. Moreover, he must have a good report, and Chief Priest Alazar does not have a good report. Everybody had a problem with him. He, he was a problem child when he was coming up in, in GMS. The camp out there in, uh, was it, Seattle, was it? The Seattle brothers can speak about him. And, it, and I, I promise you, it won't be good. For the report that they would give, it wouldn't be good. The, the uh, man of the Lord is supposed to have a good report. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach, and the snare of the devil. 
Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued. And deacon of car, he's double-tongued. Okay, he makes uh, 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 double-speak comments. Like when he said the, the word of, the, the how did he say it? It was so ridiculous that I, I can't even remember how he said it, word for word. The word of God is not contained. The word of God is the Bible, but the word of God is not contained in the Bible. Some shit like that. You brothers out there, help me out. Type in what he actually said in the comment section so others can read it. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. There you go. Let's go back. He uses that word authoritative, which we believe the whole book. The writings of Paul. The, the All scripture is given to the men of the Lord and is profitable for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that that man of the Most High may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works, that he may be perfect. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. We believe in the whole book, not just the Torah. We believe in the whole book. As it is written, Yahweh Shai said, I come in the volume of the book. He got a different breakdown. The volume of the book means the whole book, the Old as well as the New Testament. That is the epistles of Paul was a part of the book. Exactly. Um, it says... Uh, for, um, a major part of the book, as in the New Testament. Most of the New Testament is co consists of the writings of Apostle Paul. With the different churches. And then we have Peter endorsing his writings. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's move on, man. I read it. I read it the other day. It said, it "From that, from that, a child." Let me see if I can get it. Get it yep. up. I should know Second about Timothy heart, three and fifteen. Yep. Thou hast known the holy scriptures. And beautiful scripture. From a. By the way, that was Apostle Paul saying that to Timothy. Saying it, put it together right. And, and that from a child, I'm sorry. And that from a child, let's see if it comes up. Second Timothy three verse fifteen, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, mm -hmm. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Yahweh Shai. That represented the whole Old Testament, and ultimately it represents the whole book. That's right. It represents the whole book. Because the, the New Testament is part of the holy scriptures. Okay? So that cuts our boy al if he just, rep he just recognizes the Torah. So from now on, right, again, we're talking about being a hypocrite, right? So when al and his, the rest of his group, when they cite a scripture that is outside of the Torah, you can say, uh, 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 you can't use that scripture. Well, why not? Because you said you only recognize the Torah. That's what you said. So anything outside the five books of Moses which is what the Torah is called, right? Anything outside that, you can't use it, lest you be a hypocrite. We'd have to say, well, you're a hypocrite. We don't have to listen to you because you're a hypocrite. Why am I a hypocrite? Well, you're using a, you're using a quote from a book that's outside the Torah. <laughs> see, you see, see, when these guys think they're so slick that they outslick themselves. See, that's, what, that's what's happening here. At that time, the whole book wasn't, the, the New Testament was, being put together it was a series of uh, epistles that's right so oh what a the holy scriptures we are, is the old testament and the new testament and the apocrypha facts facts well you can't use the apocrypha Alazar I hope you're listening you can't use the apocrypha that's outside the Torah oh what a tangled web we weave when at first we practice to deceive but these guys, they got to be like that to manifest themselves, that they're not part of the elect. They, they went from us because they are not of us. That's in 1 John. Okay? Let's come on back. Give me a second. I'm going to fast forward it. 
I'm almost, I'm almost done with this video, man. Almost done with this video. So notice that he said he didn't view the epistles of Paul as authoritative. Then later, on my ask even this guy, this simple-minded guy, even he got him. The guy speaking, the false prophet, as his channel, right? Even he got him. Damn, Al Azari, all them years you, you a chief priest. Hold up, dude. You're a chief priest and you're letting some guy and some who's even a worse novice than you out slick you? My goodness. <laughs> Let's move on. Tim, you're going to see it. Did he believe that anything that Paul wrote was authoritative? He said no. And the argument that I was going to use was the... And how wish I gave. Hold up, man. He said... Uh, the. Uh, Alizar said everything that Paul wrote was an authoritative. Well, wait a minute. The Apostle Paul was given the authority by the brother Ananias. Let's go to Acts, the ninth chapter. Because Ananias was, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was trying to, uh, gainsay what the Heavenly Father said. And the Heavenly Father had to correct Ananias. Let's read it. Acts 9 and you know, Acts 9 and uh, 10. We'll begin there. It says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, disciple of who? Yahweh Shai, named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. This is the Lord speaking, the Heavenly Father speaking, right? Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. This is probably Yahweh Shai speaking. Let me just say that. Anyway, it was a voice of authority. How about that? the highest authority there is, speaking to Ananias, right? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, who later would be known as Apostle Paul, right? For behold, he prayeth, and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, giving him an office, of which the of which his name would be changed from Saul to Paul, and he would, and he would, um, he would embrace that office. It's scripture where he, where the apostle Paul talked about how he magnified his office. He went beyond the Jews. Now he went to the Israelites, scattered among the Gentiles. He magnified his office, so he was given the authority, chief priest Alazar. What are you talking about? And have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Because uh, the, when he was knocked off the horse as Saul, he was blinded for a period of time, three days. I believe it was three days. And he received it on the fourth day. He received back his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord. Now here comes Ananias trying to gainsay what the Lord said. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. How much evil he have done to thy saints of Jerusalem. And here ye have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Uh oh. But the Lord said unto him, Now the Lord is going to reprove Ananias from, for, for his gainsaying. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. In other words, go and do what I tell you to do. Go to this man and, and, and give him the lay upon him, lay uh, lay upon him the office. Okay, this is the office here. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, as in the Israelite foreigners, and kings and the children of Israel. These are all Israelites here. There's a thing called hendiatris. There's a term called hendiatris, which literally means three in one. So this is one idea here, the idea of the Israelites. Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. All Israelites, hendiatris, literally means three in one. Okay? Then as we read on, it says, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him. Here comes the authority, Chief Priest Alazar. I hope you're listening. Ananias gave him the authority, which Ananias was sent to at the behest of the Heavenly Father Yahweh through his only begotten son Yahweh Shai. So what are you talking about, Chief Priest Alazar? Oh, you do not, a novice like you? You do not accept the writings of Apostle Paul? Really? 
you another guy that should be riding a horse, just like Bishop Nathaniel, because you riding on your, you you sitting on your tall horse, my man. You riding a tall horse there, making those statements. <laughs> you do not endorse the writings of Apostle Paul. Who the hell are you, man? And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahushai, have appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, have sent me to give you the authority to go and teach, make you an apostle, which the word apostle means sent away. Uh, as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he was... He was given authority, Chief Priest Alizar. He was given something you're not. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why you got that stupid hat on your head. Okay? <laughs> that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. See? And then he was given his authority. The rest is history. So what are you talking about, dude? That I got the hat on your head with the five-pointed star. The demonic five-point star. How about that? Going to use was the argument from the previous video that, that I did when I got uh, the other false Hebrew camp elder or one of their captains, Tazariot busted with of ISUPK. If you want to hear that argument, go to the video where I get Captain Tazariak busted. I was going to use that. Another guy with cult of personality, Captain Tazariak. Galatians 6, 7 through 8. And if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and, and you know, after you watch this one, go watch that. Let me go hear that. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, the most high is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Okay, come on back over here. that video but um he put it out that he uh didn't believe in the epistles of paul so i wanted to get a clear cut i didn't want to have nothing ambiguous i wanted to go somewhere that he actually believed in so all of his minions could see him get destroyed with something that he actually believed in i didn't want to bring out anything that was shaky in it and then that he could say well i don't believe that anyway i don't accept that so you don't so you don't believe anything that he said is authoritative i do not believe the epistles that paul wrote are authoritative no okay cool so you don't you don't believe that anything that he wrote is authoritative okay cool. no okay no problem so then let's go to luke chapter 23 do you mm -hmm. do you think that luke what he wrote is authoritative well luke is paul's student but you know luke now let me check and see if that's true he said luke is paul's student was Luke a student of the disciple of Paul or a student of Paul? Was Luke a student of Paul? Was Luke a student of Paul? Uh, a disciple of Paul. Okay, okay. The New Testament mentions Luke briefly a few times and, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Because I just I was just reminded of the scripture, was uh, Apostle Paul told Timothy, uh, Luke is with me. Okay, Luke is with me. So Alazar got that one right. Okay, so wait a minute. If if well, that makes him look even worse. If Luke, Luke is with me. Let me see if that scripture comes up. So if Luke is a disciple of Apostle Paul, then that means you don't. <laughs> that means that means the the writings of Luke is not authoritative, and you and you shouldn't use them. I mean, it's not looking too good for you, dude. Your head is right here. Second Timothy, 
Because I just rem- I, I just at first when I first heard it, I was like, "What? Luke was a student of Paul." But you know, this is why the scriptures say to check all things, man. So now I know for surety. Second Timothy four and eleven. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee. And at first, that was the same Mark that the apostle Paul had a problem with. But Mark redeemed himself. You know, that's why he had a there was a contention between Apostle Paul and Barnabas over Mark. Okay. Only Luke is with me, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now at first, this is heavy, because at first that's the same Mark that the Apostle Paul had a problem with, because he wasn't being diligent. But then Mark straightened himself out. Mark, it was that, that fault was on Mark himself. But he straightened himself out. Well, actually the Holy Spirit came on him heavier. He got a heavier portion of the Spirit, and he became a, 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 a valuable resource to apostle paul mark okay so yes luke was a student right okay he is thought to have been both a physician excuse me and a disciple of paul got it so let's go back to the video we're about ready to wrap this video up hopefully you hung in there and got the whole well luke is you got the whole video Paul student but you know luke okay bingo you got that one right okay let's move on took uh different accounts of christ and compiled them into um his his gospel so um and he was still a student of apostle paul all right so you really shouldn't endorse any of his writings right because you don't endorse the writings of uh you don't see the authority of apostle paul so you really should question the authority of luke but now you see you hear how he's trying to word it he's just he's, <laughs> That's nothing but deceit, man. It's the mumble jumbo psycho babble double talk, man. Let's hear that. Let's hear this nonsense this guy is saying. Well, Luke is Paul's student, but you know, Luke took a. Uh... Ain't no buts. Okay, he's associated with Apostle Paul. Luke is. So if you don't respect Apostle Paul, then you don't respect the Apostle. Uh, uh, apostle. He was Apostle too. You don't respect Apostle Luke. Apostle just means sent away. You have the chief apostles. The ones that Yahweh hand chose, minus Judas Iscariot, of course. But then you have other apostles, too. The word apostle just means sent away. But you have the chief apostles. Okay? Uh, different accounts of Christ and compiled them into um, his... Uh, di different accounts of who? Christ. Who, who the hell is that? Christ? His gospel. Another guy who calls on Christ. Okay? <laughs> So, um, I don't have a problem going to the book of Luke. That's fine. Do you take it? You didn't answer my well, question. Well, you should have a problem of going in the book of Luke because Luke was a bona fide disciple of Apostle Paul. All right. So you should have a problem. If you got a, a problem with Apostle Paul, you don't recognize his authority. You should not recognize the authority of Luke. Again, this guy is a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. Okay. Be not a hypocrite. Let me bring back that scripture to you. You see? Ecclesiasticus 1.29 Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. He's not taking good heed what he's speaking. He's speaking that mumbo-jumbo nonsense. Complete with that hat on his head with the, with the uh, five-pointed star on it. The demonic five-point star on it. This guy's all messed up. And then he has the Hebrew and the t-shirt. Uh, he's all over the place. So um, I don't have a problem going to the book of Luke. That's fine. Do you take it? You didn't answer my question. Do you take it as authoritative? Sure don't be I mean, I mean, I just I just told you how the book of Luke was compiled. So you so if you read Luke 1, Luke tells you how it's compiled, right? No, no, no. no. Yeah, but Luke had an association with Apostle Paul. And if you don't respect Apostle Paul and his writings, then it, ipso facto, my, my dude, ipso facto, Latin for by the fact itself, you don't recognize. I'm going to answer the, the question for you, uh, the guy who made that video, because Alizar won't answer it. He's, he's double talking. If you don't respect the Apostle Paul and his writings, then you don't respect the writings of Luke. Because Luke was a disciple, a student, if you will, of the Apostle Paul. You can't get around it, Alizar. You can't separate uh, from what you said. Own up to what you said. Why are you doing this double talking? Um, authoritative. We, Luke does get some things wrong 
um, historically in his gospel. That's not a matter of debate. Oh, you mean like Apostle Paul? But yet you said you don't respect the writings of Apostle Paul, but somehow you respect the, the writings of, of Luke. <laughs> a man that came up underneath Apostle Paul, that was a student of Apostle Paul. Wow. That's just a fact. So as you see right here, he's having a hard time because he's very slithery because these are deceptive men. He can't. No, he's just he's just showing you um, his uh, he's just showing you his uh, example of delusion. Remember, this is the guy who finds his, his mind in a constant state of delirium, confusion, disorientated. We, we read the definition of delirium. There you go. At least he told the truth when he said that shit. Give me a straight up answer. So you're going to see me, you're going to see me having to continue to drill to him to get an exact definitive answer. Only thing I was trying to get him. R.I.P. Chief Priest Alizar. We enjoyed your little uh, three wing circus for a little bit, but yeah, it's getting old now. You know, you know what I'm saying, my dude? It's getting old. You know, it's about time. The sun is going down in your little three ring circus, man. All right. To say, do you accept, accept the gospel? You mean accept? Accept? What is accept? Of Luke, rendition of the crucifixion and how it went down. Um, but I have no problem going to the book of Luke. So you don't believe in the gospel? Yes or no? N no, I, 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 I just told you I have no problem going here. Do you believe that well, you should have a problem with Luke? Luke was a disciple of Paul. You have a problem with Paul, but not with Luke. Wow. Gospels are true or are they not true? I, 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 when did I ever say that the gospels are untrue? When did I allude to or in, anything of that sort, sir? Do you believe in the historicity of the gospels? Yes or no? Of course, but I also understand okay, that the God, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's all I needed him to say. When I asked him, did he believe in the historicity of the gospel? Okay, so I don't got... Uh, uh, wait a minute. The Apostle Paul, his writings is part of the gospel. Uh, Elazar. Uh, let's see. The Apostle Paul, his writings is part of the gospel. Okay. Bear with me for a minute. Bear with me for a minute. And the word gospel means good news. This is the book of 2 Timothy 1 and 8. It says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, this is Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of the Heavenly Father. So Apostle Paul endorsed the, the gospel. He taught the gospel. Now, you just heard what Alazar said about the gospel, right? Which the word gospel means good news. I think the Greek word there is euangelion, which means good, good news. What did I allude to or in anything of that sort, sir? Do you believe in the historicity of the Gospels, yes or no? Of course, but I also understand okay, that the God... He, he, he said, yeah, he believed in the Gospel. Apostle Paul taught the Gospel. And he told Timothy, don't be ashamed of the Gospel. Be 2 Timothy 1 and 8, the latter part. But be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the Gospel according to the power of the Heavenly Father. Okay? There you go. Of course, but I also understand okay, that the God... Hold on, hold on. Okay, that's all I needed him to say. When I asked him, did he believe in the historicity of the gospel? Okay, so I don't got to listen to no more. If you want to listen to the rest of this, <laughs> you can go. If I remember, I'll leave the link in the description box. This is the false prophet. His handle is the false prophet. Sakari leader, gorilla, Hebrew, ripped apart in debate that Christ died. I agree, he was ripped apart. Romans. My main point was...
this is why we do not deal. We don't. We do not engage in, you know, camp. You know, uh, unity camps. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom. On to the next one. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you brothers and sisters were edified by this video. I reacted to the whole video. Hope you hung in there and got, got all the edification out of this video. Okay, what you just witnessed is another Israelite, another novice, if you will, going down in flames, man. Okay. <laughs> so with that, see you in the next one.